Okay, so the periodic table is a structured arrangement of all known chemical elements. And it's organized by atomic number and properties. So on the right, we have an example of what the periodic table looks like. Um, and it's very, like the periodic table is very important to chemistry because you have to understand the elements and the periods and the periodic table to determine how chemicals interact and how they form compounds. And it's basically like the building blocks of chemistry. Um, I noticed some new people joined in real quickly while we were talking. So um, if everyone could turn on their cameras, that would be great. Um, if you can't turn on your camera, I suppose that's okay. Um, so far, we've just covered very basic stuff. And if you missed anything, this will all be posted on Google Classroom. So make sure you have access to Google Classroom. Um, okay, we can go on. Okay, so the periodic table is divided up. So if you look, um, okay, if you look on the periodic table, here we have uh, rows and we have columns. So the periodic table, the horizontal rows here, so like, you know, like the first row only has two elements. The second row has um, eight elements. And those, that, those rows are called periods. And there are seven total periods in the um, periodic table. And as you move left to right, the atomic number increases. And basically what the atomic number is, it's just that every element is associated with one element, with, with an atomic number. So for example, you can see here, we have chlorine and chlorine's atomic number is 17, which means it's number 17 on the periodic table. So we have one, two, three, four, and then if you go all the way down to 17, which is in the end of the third row, the third period, you have chlorine. Does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, we'll do a little check-in question later so you guys can um, make sure you're comprehending the information. And then the next part is about, oh, okay, so how, we talked about the periods and the vertical columns on the periodic table are families or groups. You can call them either one. And there are 18 in total on the periodic table. And elements in the same group have similar chemical properties. So, for example, in the hydrogen group, if you go down from hydrogen, which is the first element, number one, you can see that there are seven elements in the family. Um, all of these elements will have similar chemical properties, which means that maybe they're all very reactive or maybe they're all very non-reactive. Every family will have different reactiveness and everything will have different properties, which we'll talk about too. Um, okay, so a valence electron basically is the number of electrons in the outermost shell. And again, don't worry about this right now because I'll go back to this later. And elements in the same group have similar reactivities. So that means Again, all of the elements in hydrogen, like the row of hydrogen, the family, they will all have similar reactivity. And the, like all of them in uh, boron will have all the similar pro reactiveness and properties. Okay, and then moving on, um, elements within um, a group have specific names. So we have group okay these names are very important and something you're probably going to want to remember um group one which is with hydrogen and it goes from yellow to the pinks this group is called the alkali metals um this is something that's super important i think this is the most important group on the periodic table that you're going to want to know and then obviously there's more group group two is the alkaline metals um group group 17 is the halogens and group 18 
are the noble gases. The three that I'm going to say you definitely need to remember for this course are um, our family one, which is group one, which is the alkali metals, group two, which is the alkaline metals, and group 18, which is this last row here, the oranges, um, these are the noble gases. The noble gases are very important in like chemical reactivity and everything we'll talk about later. So you're going to want to know those groups. Okay. Um, so here's another picture of the um, periodic table, but on this one, um, this is what I was talking about, about the valence electrons. Um, so for the valence electrons, what, what they basically are is you have an atom, and in the atom you have a nucleus, which is the very center of the atom, and inside the nucleus you have two types of particles. We have neutrons and we have protons. The neutrons have a neutral charge. That means they don't have any charge at all. But the protons have a positive charge. Um, so you can think of it as like pro is positive, so they have a positive charge. And these two types of particles are located inside the nucleus. And there's a third type of particle, which is called an electron. Electrons have a negative charge, so opposite from protons. And they're located outside the nucleus in shells. So if you can see the blue electrons here are in these like shells. And this is just one shell. But every element has a different number of shells. For example, hydrogen, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it has only one shell. But if you go down here, sodium has three shells. So shells increase as you go down, and they also increase as you go across the periodic table. Okay, before we get into simple and atomic numbers, um, let's do a quick check-in question. So um, if anyone wants to volunteer, that'd be great, or I can call on someone. Um, okay, so the first question is which group which family or group is the alkali metals? Does anyone want to answer that? No? Okay, Anna, go ahead. As well, did you say alkali or al alkaline? Oh, alkali. Okay, that's group one. Yeah, good job. Okay, um, also the this graph, this little picture here has a little bit of a key, so it's a little bit of cheat sheet. Um, okay, another question, maybe someone else can answer this. Um, what are the horizontal rows on a periodic table called? Does anyone have an answer? Do I need to call on someone? <laughs> okay, um, should we call on William maybe? William, do you have an answer? It's okay if you don't, just let me know. Okay, um, does anyone else have an answer? Alex, maybe? Sally, anyone? Okay, well, I'll answer this one then. Oh. Okay, sorry, I did not see the chat. Um, okay, sounds good. Um, in the chat, okay. Okay, to answer the first question, where are the halogens? The halogens are group 17. So if you see this like yellow row right here, these are the halogens. Um, and these slides will be up on Google Classroom if you need to look at them again. Um, and if I'm going too fast, please tell me. Um, okay. And then... Okay. 
yeah, positrons are a thing definitely, but we're not going to cover that right now because we're doing a very, very basic lecture. Okay, Tim, um, if I'm going too fast, do you have any part, like, do you have any clarification questions that I can answer? Uh, what do you mean? Um, do you have any questions? Are you confused about anything? Yes, uh, uh, I'm confused about, like, the uh, rows and groups and stuff. I'm also confused about, yeah. Okay, sure. Thank you for the question. Um, let me actually see if I can annotate. I can. Ooh. Okay, so um, I'm going to draw here. So do you see this vertical row right here? This vertical row is called a group or a group. You can call it a family. They both mean the same thing, a group or a family. This, every vertical row, like maybe even this one or this one, they're all, a, they're all groups. They're all families. And they're called families because they all have similar, similar chemical properties. And I'll talk more about that later. But that means like they all have the same reactiveness or maybe they all have the same um, metability, everything. Um, we'll talk about that later too. So basically what you need to understand for now is that the vertical rows are called groups and or families. And they're important because groups and families have similar chemical properties. And then for for the, for the periods, do you see period one here? It says one right next to the hydrogen. So that hydrogen and helium, that's one period. That only has two elements because it's the first one. But if you go down to period five, it has a lot of elements right here. So the horizontal rows are called periods. That's basically all you need to know for now. I'll make sure to cover all the other stuff later. Did that answer your question, Tim? Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay, well, let me know if you have any other questions. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? Okay. Um, cool. That sounds good. Okay. Um, symbols and atomic numbers. Okay, you guys are probably going to want to pay attention to this because this is what your assignment is going to be on today. Um, so every element has a different symbol. And for example, hydrogen, which going back to the periodic table, Hydrogen is the very, very first element, this one. And its chemical, its symbol is H. So hydrogen is H. Helium, for example, is HE. So basically, every, every element has a different symbol and it has a different number, which we talked about earlier. And the symbols, when you're... When we get into a little bit more advanced stuff, you don't want to write out every like element name. You can just use the symbols and it's very short and it's easy to write. Does anyone have questions on chemical, like chemical um, symbols or numbers? No, you can write them in the chat if you don't want to talk. Okay, um, you guys can always ask me later too. Um, okay, so the atomic number, which we talked about, this is like one of the most important things. And so remember we talked about the overview of an atom, how inside the atom you have electrons and protons. 
Well, the atomic number is how many protons are inside the atom of that element. For example, hydrogen's atomic number is one, which means that inside hydrogen's nucleus, it only has one proton. And we can, um, we can go back to here, which means like for this, for example, this one has two protons, hydrogen will only have one. Another example is um, helium. Helium's atomic number is two. So therefore, helium will have two protons, which is this um, atom, for example, is helium's atom because it has two protons. Does that make sense to everyone? No questions? Okay. Um, atomic number is also very important because it determines the element's position, which means there are periods and rows, uh, periods and groups, which we talked about. And if you look at the periodic table, you can see it goes in order numerically. So it's like one, two, and then when you go to the next line, it's three, four, five. So it determines how the um, table is organized. Okay, now this next part is also important. We're gonna focus on metals and non-metals. Um, so metals are the largest group of elements on the periodic table, and they're found on mainly the left side. So for example, going back to the periodic table, this left area near group one and period, yeah, group one, these are all metals. And um, they're found on the left side. Metals have a lot of electrons, which means that they can move freely and they have efficient electroconductivity. Now, electrical conductivity is a big word. You don't need to know it right away. But um, basically, just think of it as they can move around very easily. Um, and metals can be hammered into thin sheets. I don't know if you guys have ever seen like the thin sheets of like metal. They can be hammered easily. And they can be drawn into wires, like um, a lot of the stuff you get at the store. They have like wires. thin sheets. When I think of thin sheets of metal, I just think of aluminum immediately. Yeah, um, that's an example. Um, and then um, they can also be drawn into wires. So when you go to the store, you see if you go to like Home Depot, for example, you can see wires, and that's metal. Um, and most metals, um, they're very shiny, they're reflective, um, and they're solid at room temperature, which is very important. Um, there's one element, mercury, which at room temperature is a liquid. That's the only exception. And some examples of metals are copper, iron, and aluminum. Like you talked about, aluminum sheets. Um, okay, any questions on metals? What makes a... Uh, um... The elements on the thing count as a metal. Okay, good question. Um, so elements are metals if they have these properties that we talked about. If they're if they can be hammered into thin sheets, if they can be if they can turn into wires without breaking, if they're shiny and reflective, and if they're solid at room temperatures, that means they're metals. Does that answer your question? Then what about mercury? Mercury is the only exception. So what does it have to be a metal? Mercury, it has all the other properties except it's liquid at room temperature. That's the only exception. Otherwise, all metals are solid. What is mercury, by the way? Um, mercury is an element. Here, I can show you a picture. Here. 
Let me actually stop sharing. There's it's a also a um, the stuff in the thermometers. Yeah, that's a good example. It's the stuff in thermometers. It's also a planet. Mm -hmm. I can show you what Mercury looks like. Here. So you see, it's also shiny. It's reflectable, but it's a liquid. And they look like just like marbles. Yeah. Looks pretty cool. It looks really cool. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on metals? Uh, uh, I thought mostly was red, not like a silver color. Yeah. Um. Some. I think that's a very like common assumption. Mercury is actually silver. Um. I think you're thinking of the planet here. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, any other questions or should I go on? Okay, I'm gonna assume no more questions, but please definitely do ask me if you have questions. And if you're not comfortable talking out loud, put them in the chat and I'll, I'll monitor the chat. Okay, so um, now we're gonna talk about nonmetals. Nonmetals are on the right side of the periodic table. And remember, we talked about halogens and noble gases, group 17 and 18. Those are nonmetals. And nonmetals don't conduct electricity well, which means they don't have a lot of free electrons. They can't move around very freely. They are very, like, they can break easily and they're very brittle. Um, and nonmetals are usually not shiny like metals are, they're very dull and their matte in appearance. And at room temperatures, they can be lots of different things. They can be solid gas, and there's only one liquid that's as non-metal, which is bromine. And non-metals are very important to us. Like they're the gases, oxygen that we breathe, nitrogen, all the gases in our atmosphere is a non-metal. Any questions on non-metals? Um, so, non-metals, so is it like, like any kind of gas or thing that isn't shiny or reflective, or it's just like some specific types? Um, could you elaborate a little bit on your question? Are you asking that, um, like, how we like identify non-metals? Yes. Okay, yeah, so non-metals, how we identify them is... Dull and matte appearance is important, but I think the most important thing to um, to identify nonmetals are it's like how it reacts. So, for example, um, it's brittle and it breaks easily, right? Metals don't do that. If you try to break a piece of metal, like a bar of metal, it's very hard to break, right? Or steel. But it is possible. It is possible, yes, but it's very, very hard. Um, and um, nonmetals don't conduct electricity well, which is a very important thing. Metals can conduct electricity, but nonmetals can't conduct electricity. Like the wires on the telephone line. Sorry, what was that? Like um, on the lines hanging up. The lines? Yeah, like um, the telephone lines. Oh, when you go to like across farm and stuff. Yeah, so uh, that's that's a good example. Electron con so electric conductivity is basically when heat or electric charge can pass through a material like a wire, for example. That was a very good example. Um, yeah, so it's like basically how how the element reacts with other things like with conducting electricity with um how it looks and how it um how it is how it breaks that's how we determine whether it's a non-metal or a metal and you guys are not going to be asked to determine that but um if you're ever asked to identify one try to think of like 
I'm not going to ask you to identify, I'm not going to give you a particular element and ask you to identify whether it's a metal or non-metal, but just as generally think that metals are on the left side of the periodic table and non-metals are on the right side. Okay. Any other questions? You guys have really good questions. Okay. We're going to talk next about alkali metals. Remember that? We talked about group one. Um, okay, so alkali metals are a group of elements that are found in group one. And so there are lots of characteristics of alkali metals. So um, remember how I told you how families and groups, the vertical rows on the periodic table, how they have similar properties? Yes. So, all of them, we're gonna, all of them have different properties and now we're talking about alkali metals. So alkali metals are very reactive and they are the most reactive metals because they have low ionization energy, which just means that they can, their electron, they have electron on the outside, remember? And alkali metals will lose their electron they will get rid of that electron and they'll form cations instead, which a cation is a positively charged ion. We'll talk about that later too. So I know that won't make sense right now for some people, um, but I will cover that later. So any questions on the reactivity of alkali metals? Um, wait, never mind. Okay, if you have a question, you can ask or type it in the chat. Um, okay, moving on. Alkali metals are very soft and shiny. So they're shiny. You can obviously see how shiny they are with your eyes. And they're so soft that you can cut them with a knife, which I think is pretty cool. Alkali. Alkali. That's a lie. Um, I think alkali metals in their purest form can be cut with a knife. To tell which one it is, which one by the name. I'm sorry, what? It's hard to tell which one's which one by the name. Alkali and alkaline. Yeah, they are very similar. Um, but I try to think of it as alkali. It has fewer letters, so it's in the first group. But alkaline has more metal, more letters, which is why it's in the second group. Okay. Okay, a little bit more about alkali metals, and then we'll do a quick check-in question again. Um, so alkali metals have low melting and boiling points. That means when you take this metal and you try to melt the metal, it won't take much to melt it, which means Basically, you can melt and boil the metal very easily compared to other metals. Any questions on that? No, okay. And these metals react with water. So when they're put in water, these metals react very like, very violently and they produce hydrogen gas and they also produce a solution. So basically what you need to know about alkali metals are they are reactive because they lose an electron, they're soft and they're shiny, they have low melting and boiling points, and they react with water. Are you on alkali or alkaline? Alkali. It's up here on the slide. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering if my screen glitched out. No, 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 I'm still on alkali. Um, okay, any questions? Okay, well, I'm gonna do a check-in question then. Hello, so what's an example of alkali, alkali metal? Sure, that's a good question. Um, here, let's go back to the periodic table and I can show you up here. So the periodic table, lithium, sodium, potassium. Do you see the pink row here? 
this like pink row are alkali metals. So I can show you an example of sodium, for example. Sodium is what you would find in salt. Um, but this is what it looks like as a metal. Uh, sodium chloride, right? Sorry, what? Uh, salt is sodium chloride. Yeah, yeah. Salt is sodium chloride, but sodium is a component of salt. And this is what it looks like when it's raw. It's like metal, where you can like cut through it. So when we put like a uh, salt on a uh, stuff, so we're eating like a uh, cooked like metals. Sorry, can you repeat that? So when we're like putting salt and stuff, are we eating like uh like melted metals in the salt? We're basically eating um a mineral but it's not toxic to um to humans so we're safe when we eat salt it looks like um it we're looks just like learning minerals in class right now um why is how do you spell metal m e t e l m e t a l well one spelling's wrong cuz i see it in a picture <laughs> it looks like metal but you can cut through it, kind of. Yeah. Picture. That's... Okay. You know what? It looks like graphite for some reason. Yeah. A lot of metals do look like that. Okay. Do we have any other questions, or should I ask the check-in question real quick? No more. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to stop sharing for a second and see if you guys can do it without the slides. Okay, an alkali metal. What it has low blank and blank points. What are the blank points? I can type it in the chat too. It has low like boiling point and it can be cut by a knife. I don't know. Okay, you got one of them. What boiling point is correct, but do you know what the other one is? I put it in the chat too, so you guys can. Melting point? Yeah, that's correct. Good job. So it's alkali metals have low melting and boiling points. Um, so they ha does that mean they have a like very small amount of temperature in which they are solid. Um, so it basically means that it only takes a little, like compared to other metals, it only takes a little bit of heat to melt them or boil them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Okay. Okay, so we're actually not going to talk about um, alkaline metals because I know everyone's getting very confused between the two and alkaline metals are not as important as alkali metals. So focus on the properties of the alkali metals. And also when you go up to the periodic table here, you can see that this like light pink color in the center of the periodic table. These are called transition metals because you're transitioning from the metals to the non-metals on the right side. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about transition metals. So transition metals are from group three to 12. So going back to the periodic table, you can see this is group three here, the, where the light pink starts, and it goes to group 12, which is where the light pink ends. Um, transition metals have certain characteristics too. Um, so unlike alkali metals, they have high melting and boiling points. So that means it takes a lot of heat and a lot of, like a very high temperature to- 
how high? Oh, I don't know the specific number off the top of my mind, but it's very high. Here, let me check. Okay. Did something fall? No. no, I think that was the sound of typing. That's her typing. Okay. Unlike me, who types at 10 words per minute. Okay. Our type at 10 words per minute. So every um, transition element actually has a different melting point, but they're all very high. So for example, you guys know what iron is, right? Yeah. Okay. So iron has a melting point of 2,800 Fahrenheit. Okay. Is that high? That's very high. Right now, it's outside in like San in California where I am. It's 75 Fahrenheit. Mostly around the world, it like it's usually never more than a in most places never more than a hundred degrees. Maybe it's 110 or 120. Yeah, there. like um, the valley has. It's really hot there, but it's 63 where I live. Okay, so if it's 63 right now, imagine if what it's going to be like when it's 2,800. That's really hot, right? No water. We'd all die. Yeah, it's not... Either get sunburned really bad and die, or not have enough water in there. Just die and die. Okay, Tim, do you have a question? Okay, so I've been into Las Vegas before, and the measurement took like a hundred and like twelve to hundred nine or hundred twelve degrees. And that was pretty hot, right? Yes, exactly. So imagine. Now, if it's... I just searched it up on Google. Even magma. Is it's a hundred right now in Death Valley. So imagine well, if just it's... search it up on Google. Even magma is not two thousand eight hundred degrees. It's like two thousand three hundred. We'd actually get like, um, like a thousand degree burn. Okay. Be that bad. I mean, never. Okay, guys, let's let's make sure to stay on topic. Um, okay. I am on topic. That's true. Me too. Um, do we have any other questions or should we continue on on now? transition metals? Okay, so transition metals conduct heat and electricity very, very well. Um, any questions on that? Okay, um, so basically conducting, okay, so and transition metals are often, they're very colorful, so they look very pretty too, and um, examples of transition metals are iron, copper, and gold, which I know is everyone's favorite element, um, so you know gold, it's very shiny, right, it's very gold, it's very pretty, which is like other transition metals also, they're very colorful. Yes, Tim. Okay, so when playing Minecraft, uh, the copper <laughs> is green or orange, but it's mostly orange. Is it in real life orange? Yeah, copper is actually like a brownish orange. If you want me to show you the actual color, I can. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, this is what copper looks like. You guys have pennies, right? You've seen pennies? That's that, Those are made out of copper. So, that's the actual color of copper. Isn't that just purified copper? That is, that is. But, like, um, raw copper has... That's very like similar color. This is what wait, raw copper looks like. Wait, I see the picture to the left that says chemical 
and it just says copper. It it it's oh, it, oh. Um, the picture to the left. Mine was glitched out, as so it's like way up. Okay. Um, what are you trying to ask? Do you have a question? I don't know. I I don't have. I don't see the picture that you're talking about. So. I was wondering if there was also green on copper. So copper. It's actually, it looks like this. What on copper? Green color. I think that's what someone was asking. Oh. was asking. So copper rusts. So if you leave it out, if it's like been around for a very long time, or if it's exposed to too much water, or um, it, it's, it starts rusting, which is why it starts turning green. Like in Minecraft. Sure, I've actually never played Minecraft before, so. Oh, so when you leave copper out for a really long time, the it slowly gradually starts turning green. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. If you leave it out for a very very long time, it turns green. Uh, oh, I've just... seen one penny. Totally yeah, like green. The, it was like really really the, old and it's totally green. For example, the Statue of Liberty is green. Yeah, that's copper. a good example. Copper. Was, was it made out of copper? Yeah, the Statue of Liberty was made out of a bit of copper as well as other metals. I can't... And so it was bronze once? Um, I feel like... it. Yeah, I, I think it was definitely a different color. Um, so it's made out of like... Um, a lot of copper and that's why it's green now because it's like oxidized over time and that's why it's turned green i never knew that yeah fun fact I was always the green. torch is also made out of gold uh, I, um excuse me can i talk yeah. okay so i've heard this youtuber that i watched called lockdown life he made the Statue of Liberty in Minecraft out of copper. Yeah, because um, if you copper is actually what it's made out of. So if you make it in Minecraft and you you're saying it turns green, then it would do the same thing in Minecraft. Okay, any other questions? We have a couple of more slides to cover. Um, Why is gold the radiation is A U? Yeah, okay. So the abbreviations come from the element's Latin name. So gold's Latin name probably starts with AU. I don't know the exact Latin name, but the element symbols derive from the Latin names. Oh. So you've just got to get used to them. And so it should be like GO or something. Yeah, but they're derived from the Latin name. So in Latin, gold is something else. So it's AU, and it makes sense when you're so, saying So, it's so complicated. No, I think it is just like every, every, actually, every English word is also derived from Latin. Oh, true. Okay, no other questions? I'm going to move on. Okay. Now we're going to talk about trends in the periodic table. This is the most complicated part. Um, I don't think we have to cover the entire thing, but... What are trends? Trends mean like patterns. Patterns across the periodic table. Something that's popular. <laughs> no, it means... It, well, let's stick with the definition that trends are like patterns in the periodic table. Okay. In the periodic table, not yeah. in regular life. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Yeah. Um, I'm doing this at a library right now. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about trends. So, um, Across a period, which is the horizontal rows, when you go from left to right, the atomic 
radius decreases, which you don't, I don't, you don't really need to know this right now, but it's a fun fact if you want to read it. Um, but just, you don't need to know why, but just think about that when you're going from left to right, the size of the atom becomes smaller. Just wondering, what time is it in your time? I'm in California, so it's 5.50. Five? Yes. Yeah. Is, is it still light out? Yeah, it is. AM or PM? It's 8.50 over here. PM. Same. It's 7.50 for me. It's uh, 5.52. Is it AM or PM for you? Uh, I think it's PM. 5.52 PM. Good. It's You're not awake at like 5 in the morning. It's 8.52 PM over here in Georgia. Okay, guys. Very cool. It's 7.52. Okay. Can we do a look it sometime? A what? Like, it's a game where you can like do quizzes. Sure. Yeah, it's basically quest. the same thing as Kahoot, but it's more fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fun. It gets really fun. Well, today we're doing Kahoot, so if you want to play that, we got to get through the lecture. Do you guys want to play Kahoot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we got to get through the lecture. Okay. So when you're going top to bottom from on the periodic table or down a group, the atomic radius gets bigger which is because you have more electrons. And I don't think we'll talk about ionization energy today because we don't have enough time left. It's a complicated subject. So we'll come back to this next class, actually. And yeah, okay, let's play Kahoot because we do need time for you need to explain the assignment and everything to you too. Okay, are you guys ready to play Kahoot? Okay. Uh, if you guys can open up Kahoot.it, and I will show you the code real quick as soon as I can make it up. Okay. If you guys can put in this game pin and join the Kahoot, that'd be great. I hate my my thing. This is like a dog with wearing goofy hair. Change it then. And my favorite animal is creepy. Okay. Is everyone in? Does anyone still need time to get in? Can I change my character first? I don't want to have an ugly character. 20 seconds. Let's go. There are not two firmats. There is one firma and one firma. Oh, did someone leave? No. And bye. All right, I'm gonna mute. Okay. Okay. Are you? Is everyone on here? Is everyone ready to play? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna start the game then. And because we didn't get through everything, I'm gonna skip over some of the questions if we need to. Okay. Okay. So the first question, in ancient times, people believed that everything was composed of which four fundamental elements? It's easy if you actually read the questions because it says four, not three. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to start us off with an easy question. Um, 
This was in the slides, earth, water, air, and fire is what people used to think. This is important. It'll be on your quiz next Earth, time. water, and fire. Okay. Okay. Pretty good. Very close. I'm 80. How many elements are on the periodic table? How would I know? This is in the lecture. But it's okay if you don't I arrived people. late. Oh. Yeah, everything is in the lecture. Yeah, I'm guessing. It's okay. It's okay. See? Oh. I knew it. Guys, that was a pretty good guess. Okay, yes. Why is there always the one person? I was going to guess that, and then I got it wrong. It's okay. It's okay. We're learning here. It's, it's okay to make mistakes. My, my avatar is, like, sad now. It's okay. Okay. Oh, okay. How is the periodic table divided up? Um, I this is taking a long time for everyone to answer. Yay! I was going to guess something else, okay. but periods and groups and. Periods and families, because remember the vertical columns can be groups. I'm in families. sixth place finally, and I'm happy now because my avatar okay. is happy. Okay. Hey, okay, I'm in first place. Yay. Okay. Yeah, I clicked the wrong one. I clicked the wrong one. I clicked the right one. I just guessed. Okay, remember as you move left to right, the atomic number increases because you're putting um, the elements are in order numerically. So it's one and then two and then three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and also remember we talked about how the elements on the left are... Um, metals and elements on the right are non-metals, which means when you go from left to right, they become non-metals, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any How questions? many questions do we have left? Uh, like, uh... um, we have like, I feel like we have like eight more, but I'm going to skip over some of them because we didn't cover the entire lecture. We'll be done very soon, like five minutes, maybe. I have a feeling that maybe there's two right in this. Maybe. Nope. Wow. This one is maybe a hard one. Okay. So remember that picture I showed you with all the atoms on it? I thought they were different. You said like as you're going down, they're like. No. Uh, so they have the same number of shells. When you're going across, when you're going down, there's more shells. But when you're going, I thought you meant down. Okay. Oh. Whoops. Okay. Um. Okay. Ooh, five oh, correct I'm answers. Sad. Wow. Correct answer. Okay. What two particles are located in the atom's nucleus? Why this is, is neutrons being spelled like that? It's dogs obvious. And it's da dogs and cats. Yeah. It's dogs Who and wouldn't cats. guess that? Aw, okay. no one guessed. Yeah, guys. No one guessed dogs and cats. Aw, oh, that's sad. Probably not dogs and cats. So It's dogs and cats. Okay. Protons and neutrons are on the nucleus of the atom. Electrons are located outside the nucleus. Yay. Oh, I'm not still not there. What does the atomic number show? You think about it. This is an electric too. Am I a pure genius? No. 
thing. Uh huh. And it's hard to. So remember, remember protons. It is protons. Remember that protons are not outside the atom; they are inside the atom. And neutrons are also inside the atom, but the atomic number doesn't determine neutrons. I still have the question: Why is neutrons being spelled like? Okay. Next question. Okay, I'm yeah, still number one. I'm like a thousand points be between like Sophia. Okay. Okay, which one has electrical conductivity? Remember we talked about the wires? Yeah. Telephone wires. Yeah, guys. Okay. I'm, I am 18 points behind. Metals are what at room temperature, with the exception of one. They're mostly what at room temperature. I paid attention during class. What does awkward? I'm proud of myself. Okay. I'm very proud of myself. Yeah. I think we spent a bit on this slide, which is at the top. Yeah, we spent like a long time. <laughs> I'll try to make the lecture shorter and we'll do more activities in this lecture. Okay, this is very important. And it's not alkaline, it's alkali. Luckily, I also paid attention during this class. Always. Yeah. It's hard not to pay attention. Group one, good job, guys. Yay. Okay, we're actually gonna skip this one um, because, oh, did we talk about this? My bad. No, how dare you? We all lost our answer streaks. No. Okay, well, we talked about this one, it's fine. No. Okay, this one was apparently very hard. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. remember that number of shells increases as you go down. Going back to this picture, increases Can as you go down. It does, it's At least increase. I'm still on the podium. I'm still on the podium. Total. Okay. Now we're up for all. Okay, who's number three? I was the fourth, like. Seven. Williams number two, pretty good. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, who's not here? Me. Who's not here? Okay. Me, not here. Anna. Good job, Anna. Okay. Very funny. Who's not here? Ha ha ha. I think it was Anna. Okay. Okay, guys, we're almost done. I'm just going to tell you about your assignment and then. See you next week. Okay. I'll be posting the assignment on Google Classroom, but there's this game. Um, you can just click the link, and then basically what it's going to tell you to do. So yeah, let's watch the ad. But um, it'll tell you. I want you guys to start learning the um, chemical symbols. So you can choose easy, medium, hard, whatever you want. And make sure you unclick the symbol. That's the one we want. And then we play the game, and it's going to tell you click on platinum. Then we have to click on one. Or we can make it easier. Click on sulfur. Okay. Right. And then I want you guys to try to attempt. I, I said 20, but let's make it like 10. Attempt like 10 questions on this. And, and then what do we do? So once you try 10 questions, it doesn't matter if you're incorrect or correct. Try to like solve your own mistakes. Um, answer 10 questions and take a screenshot of this and then submit it on Google Classroom. Oh, okay. And then the second assignment, there's just like a little, it's a very short worksheet. There's only like seven or eight questions. Do um, we have to do the worksheet or the homework? Yeah, I'll show you the worksheet. It's very easy. You just have to say, what's a family? What's a period? Look at, find the elements, find their names, find their symbols, and then don't do number nine because we did not talk that, talk about that. Okay. And then 
I will I will post the slides and I will post the assignments on Classroom, Google Classroom. Make sure you're on there. And I will, okay, and then make sure you do this by the end of next week because we'll do a really short, simple assessment at the beginning of next class. And then there's extra resources on the slide. This is like an interactive periodic table. You don't have to do that. It's just if you want to. And if and that's it. And if you have any questions, you can send me a message or you can email me. Does anyone have any last questions? Bye. Okay, if not bye. Have a good week, guys.